Timimun, the capital of Gerara. This oasis has become a small town of about 23,000 people. It's the busiest of the region's hundreds of oases. The other oases are much less developed, and some do not yet have electricity. This market, although very far away from any sea, is strangely reminiscent of the Mediterranean. Here we are at the market in Timamoun, where I am selling carrots, cabbage, onions, parsley. I only sell food that comes from my garden, that I raise with my own hands. I come here because there are a lot of people. I live in a small oasis 12 kilometers away, but there's no market there. There are only vegetable gardens. If I want to sell my vegetables, I have to come to the market in Timamoun. I don't know how long my family has lived in this oasis, but I do know I was born here and that my grandfather was already living here. My pond fills up every day, allowing me to water my lettuce, carrots and onions. The water runs continuously in the gardens, day and night. You just have to make sure that sand doesn't block up the system. Gardeners have to maintain their canals to ensure this doesn't happen. You know, if the water stopped running, life here would quickly become impossible and the entire oasis would have to move. I don't necessarily want my kids to have the same life I've had. Growing plants in the desert is hard work. For now, they're in school in Timimun. I don't know what they'll end up doing, but I do wish them a better life. Out of my 10 kids, I'm not sure there's even one who's interested in taking over the garden. One would be enough, but it has to be their choice. If none of them are interested, I'll have to deal with that. If none of my kids wants to take over the garden, I can always give part of it to another gardener on the oasis. Nomads and gardeners have a very different approach to water. Nomads journey from well to well, sometimes over days, to find drink for their dromedaries. Gardeners who require water daily rely on the fogaras to fill their ponds. The pond is central to irrigating the gardens. Each gardener has at least one pond. The amount of water in the pond determines the cultivable area. The bigger the pond, the bigger the parcel of land as long as there's enough water to keep it filled. Mm -hmm. 
One day, about 15 years ago, all of a sudden the water just stopped flowing throughout the oasis. Everyone was concerned, and everyone worked to find out where the Fagara had collapsed. We repaired the tunnel, and the water went back to running normally, the way it is today, although the water pressure is not as strong as it had been. Now that people want running water in their homes, we've had to dig new wells that tap into the water table that feed the Fagaras. As a result, the water pressure has diminished in the gardens. The division of water in the oasis works well because it's based on mutual trust. If someone feels there's a problem, for example, if I thought my water pressure had changed for no reason, I can ask for the commission for its advice and eventually the commissioners would redistribute the quantity of water among the gardens. Measuring the water divided among the different parcels of land is a big responsibility. Only a few of us are allowed to do it. A gardener can clean out the ducks, but isn't allowed to touch the different combs of the fogaras. My uncle, who is a member of the commission, has been teaching me about the ways to share and divide up the water since I was a little boy. We like to teach our children about the water division system for Fogaras. It's a tradition for us here. But knowing exactly how to do it and taking responsibility for the division is another thing. Now, at the age of 50, the gardener has reached the required age to join the commission. He'll take over from his uncle the task of dividing the water on the oasis. An oasis relies on finding harmony among different things. That created with nature is as vital as the necessary harmony among the inhabitants. People involved in the water division and measuring process cannot be any younger, 50 or 60. The commissioners are trustworthy people that the village inhabitants respect and can count on. It's a very big responsibility, not only in our lifetime, but especially before God, who judges our actions. The gardener and his uncle have been meeting more and more frequently of late. My work is to divide the water among the different parcels of land on the oasis, based on the Fagara ledgers. I know two days without water is enough to annihilate a whole crop, and I understand this transfer of responsibility. One doesn't acquire such a privilege lightly. Rather, responsibility is granted after a lifetime of patience, learning, and listening to the elders. <laughs> Thus begins a new commitment that will require his total dedication.
In the desert, land alone is useless. Only water is valuable. Land only has value if there is water. By listening to nature, man has created life where it was least expected. Without genius or miracles, the oasis was born through hard work.